everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to be focusing in on the cells of the immune system and their various jobs. Specifically, we are going to look at our lymphocytes and in this video, we're going to focus all of our attention on the T lymphocyte. In the following video that's going to come out after this, you can watch the video around B lymphocytes. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because I I'm going to be making a whole series of updated grade 11 videos and I want to know what you want to see next and so leave a comment down below of a topic that we haven't covered that you really struggle with and of course if you are new here don't forget I also have study guides called the cheat sheet for grades 10 to 12 in life sciences also available at missangler.co.za. So let's dive into the immune cells. Now, depending on what kind of high school you go to and what you need to know, I'm going to teach you the basics, pretty much what everybody needs to know, starting off with the T lymphocyte. We're going to look at the various kinds that you get and their various jobs. It's really important to know what a T lymphocyte is because it is the initiator of the immune system. In other words, it's the one that starts your immune system response. So let's dive into the various types of lymphocytes, specifically the different types of T lymphocytes that we get. Now, T lymphocytes are adaptive immune response cells, which essentially means that they have um, specific things that they're going to respond to. And there are two main kinds that we need to know. The first kind of T lymphocyte that we need to know about, it's really important, is going to be what we call a helper T. Now, a helper T cell, is going to start the immune response. And without this cell, you wouldn't be able to tell all the other immune cells as well as any of the other cells of the body that you're under attack and that we need to respond. And so hence the name helper T. It helps determine whether your body is under attack. So how does it actually do this? Well, it's really important to notice that on the surface of the helper T is this little protein that sticks out on the outside here, and we call that an antigen. Now, an antigen is a protein receptor. It's like a little flag that determines whether or not that cell belongs there. Now, that helper T is going to have a whole bunch of those little antigens or receptors on the outside of itself. If it comes into contact with a a pathogen or a microorganism that doesn't belong there or a cell that is infected or dying or perhaps it's a cell that um, needs to, to, to be dealt with and like removed from the body for some reason and I'll get into more detail why just now. But you need a, a signal or a flag or a name tag and that's what antigens are. They're like protein name tags on the outside of cells telling your body whether or not that thing belongs there. Now pathogens like bacteria and viruses, they have antigens on the outside of them and that's what signifies to your body cells something is inside of you because it doesn't have your antigens in it, it has a foreign antigen in it. Now, speaking of that, we have to look at once we've initiated the immune response, and I'm going to go into more detail of that just now, but once we've initiated it, we need a second round of attack, and that is where our killer T's come in. Now, killer T's are, as the name suggests, a T lymphocyte that is destined to destroy foreign invading um, pathogens, but also, and very more specifically, and what makes a T lymphocyte a T lymphocyte, is that they are going to kill a variety of ill or damaged cells as well. So killer T cells don't just kill cells infected specifically with a virus, and it's important to know that it must be a virus. Killer T's also destroy cancer cells, and they can also destroy, interestingly enough, transplanted organs. 
And that's probably why you see people who have an organ transplant and they reject the organ. It is because their own immune system is attacking that organ. Yet again, the killer T is going to know that something is up or suspicious because it has, once again, receptors on the outside that indicate whether or not the thing it's bumping up against and touching does its antigen match my receptor and vice versa? Does my antigens match the receptors on the other cell? If that's not the case, I know it's a foreign invader. But let's just expand this a little bit more with another diagram. So to go a bit further, because I think we must expand a little bit more, let's talk about how you actually activate those helper T's. So I've got a lovely diagram here to show you what is happening step by step. So. T lymphocytes are generally triggered by viruses. They can also be triggered by bacteria, but I'm going to come back to the bacterial one later on when we do B lymphocytes. You will notice on the outside of the virus, there are those antigens I mentioned earlier, which signifies them as being foreign invaders. They don't belong here. Their antigens don't match ours. So who comes to help initially? Well, what can happen, and this is one option, is a phagocyte or another white blood cell, which is we've learned earlier on in this series, these cells are nonspecific, which literally means if they find a foreign invader like a viral cell, they will engulf it. And that's what you can see now. It's being absorbed into the phagocyte. Now, when that happens, the phagocyte needs to tell somebody. They're like, I found somebody. Somebody's broken into the cell. I need to tell somebody. And who do they attract? They attract the helper T cells. Now, how do you tell each other if something is wrong? Remember those little flags I spoke about earlier, the antigens? Well, you see what happens on the outside of the phagocytes is their antigens change, almost like an indication or waving a flag that indicates danger. And the helper T comes over and looks at that and goes, oh my goodness, you're infected. I need to let people know. And who are those people? People? Well, one of them is going to be the killer T's. I will get to how they also alert B lymphocytes, but that will be in the follow-up video. When our helper T's do call for help from our killer T's, this is how the killer T's get rid of that virus that has infected yourself. So our killer T is going to be attracted towards the cells that are infected. Remember, it must be a viral infection. Why? Because viruses live inside of a cell. They don't live on the outside of a cell for very long. Phagocytes can deal with that really easily. The problem is when they go inside of a cell, your body doesn't know those cells are sick. So you've got to look out for special signs. And that's what the helper T was, to look out for a special sign that something was wrong. Now we know that special sign has been said and this cell is infected and it's sick, along comes the killer T's. Now, killer T's are going to produce a cytotoxin, which essentially is a cytoplasmic toxin or a cell membrane toxin. And it's going to eat away into the infected cell. And the infected cell is now filled with all of these viral particles on the inside here. And we want to get rid of all of that virus. And so we literally cause the cell to burst. As you can see here, there are some openings. And when the cell bursts, it leaks out all of its um, cytoplasm and nucleus, but it also leaks out the virus. And that's important because, one, we can get a phagocyte to come in and destroy and remove it. And so if we imagine here is our viral particles, along comes an enormous phagocyte that can surround those particles and absorb them into itself, removing it from your body, your tissues, your bloodstream. And at the same time, that cytotoxin also destroys the cell membrane or the capsid or the outer layer of the virus destroying it and making it leak out as well, preventing it basically from replicating. It stops it from replicating. Because remember, that's the point of your immune system. You can't stop the microorganism from getting into you completely. You can try, 
But once it's inside of you, you need to stop its reproduction. That's the most important thing. A virus, if it lives inside of you and it's not reproducing, that's a good thing. It means that your body has taken hold and it's preventing any further damage. Now, the last thing I want to say before we wrap up and we move into terminology is you may have learned that helper T's, this one over here, is really important and linked to HIV. That is because people who have HIV, the virus, HIV, lives inside of helper T cells, which means that's the worst case scenario. That means helper T's in people with HIV don't work. And that means that the very virus they're trying to protect themselves against actually lives in the cells that do the alerting. It's kind of like the HIV virus has taken these helper T's hostage and they can't alert, they can't shout for help. And that's how HIV lives inside of you undetected for so long until, of course, it moves into its reproductive stage. And that's when you start to see symptoms. If you want more information on that, don't forget to watch the video above now on the lyctic and lysogenic cycle, because that also links into what we've discussed today, where we have to have knowledge about how viruses reproduce and replicate, and that will link into how killer T's rep, um, do their job and function. Now, as I said early on in the video, I mentioned that there are a few other T cells we need to cover. We've already done the helper T's and the killer T's. Now we need to look at the third and final T cell that you would need to know in grade 11, which is going to be these regulatory T cells. Now, their alternative name is going to be a suppressor cell. And as the name suggests, a suppressor cell does just that. It suppresses your immune system. It stops your immune system from working. Now, why would you need that? Well, when your infection is over, so you have beaten the virus, and now you need to kind of stop production of killer T's, stop antibodies, all of that, and we'll talk about that in another video, you need to send your resources elsewhere. If you don't suppress your immune system, which is what the suppressor cells do, and they say, guys, it's over, we won. The virus, the bacteria, it's gone. If that doesn't happen, your body can start to attack itself, healthy cells, healthy tissue. And that's what leads to immune deficiency syndromes, disorders, diseases, things like lupus, for example, where your own body attacks healthy tissue and organs because it thinks it's a foreign evader and the suppressor cells are not doing their job. They're not suppressing it. Sometimes this can also be what happens when you have a allergic reaction to certain things when you have vaccinations. Sometimes the suppressor cells don't come in soon enough when you've been ill and your, your sickness kind of goes on forever or it's an unnecessary response and it's too over the top for the small infection you had. That's because the suppressor cells haven't been able to do what they needed to do, which was suppress and stop your immune system. Now, as always, I like to finish off these lessons with a terminology recap. Remember, you can use these to make flashcards from, super easy to do. And remember, biology is all about using the correct terminology. So, first of all, we spoke about the fact that you, of course, have lymphocytes. They're also known as your white blood cells. There are many different kinds. We did T lymphocytes today. We looked at helper T's, which are the T lymphocytes that start the immune response. They ring the alarm, they alert the whole body to foreign invaders, and they also work together with phagocytes to kind of raise the flag and say, we are infected. The second kind we covered today was killer T's. Killer T's are your armed response. Their response is to kill infected cells. So that means that killer T's generally target viral infections, so viruses, because remember, viruses live inside of cells. The other things that killer T's destroy, remember, are things like cancer, 
Um, it can also be transplanted organs or sometimes when a cell is ready to die, it needs a little bit of a nudge to be you know, disposed of and killer T's can also help getting rid of cells that are not where they belong. Speaking of which, when we finally recover or when we want the infection to be handled and end, we need a suppressor cell. Suppressor cells are there to stop the immune response to the infection because if you keep responding to the infection, you are going to utilize all your resources and the worst case scenario, without suppressor cells, your immune response will continue and affect your healthy cells and they attack your own cells. We also spoke about antigens, and antigens are a really important word all the way through the immune system. Remember, antigens are these like protein markers or flags on the outside of cells that label them as your cell or somebody else's cell or a foreign invader like a microorganism. And so they're like these little um, specially shaped, uniquely shaped flags made out of protein on the outside of the cell. And last but not least, we did get a honorable mention for phagocytes in this video. Remember, phagocytes are non-specific immune cells and their sole responsibility is to essentially blindly move through your bloodstream and your tissues, basically engulfing and absorbing foreign invaders and also old dead cells or cells that have died due to things like maybe cancer or things like viruses that have caused the cell to die itself. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.